Good morning, everyone. Our opening song will be All Are Welcome. Let us build a house where love can dwell and all can safely live. A place where saints and children tell how hearts learn to forgive. Built of hopes and dreams and visions, rock of faith and vault of grace. Here the love of Christ shall end division. All are welcome, all are welcome, all are welcome in this place. Let us build a house where prophets speak and words are strong and true where all God's children dare to seek to dream God's reign anew. Here the cross shall stand as witness and a symbol of God's grace. Here as one we claim the faith of Jesus. All are welcome, all are welcome, all are welcome in this place. Let us build a house where love is found in water, wine, and wheat, a banquet hall on holy ground where peace and justice meet. Hear the love of God through Jesus is revealed in time and space. As we share in Christ the feast that frees us, all are welcome, all are welcome, all are welcome in this place. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, my brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. As we gather at this Mass, we pray in a special way for the repose of the soul of Frank Nafik and the special intention for Juanita and Maria Lopez, and for all those in our Book of Life. Gathering our prayers into one, let us recognize our sinfulness before our God and turn to Him for mercy, for He is full of gentleness and compassion. You raise the dead to life in the Spirit. Lord, have mercy. You bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. You bring light to those who are in darkness. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sin and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, protector of those who hope in you, without whom nothing has firm foundation and nothing is holy, bestow in abundance your mercy upon us and grant that with you as our ruler and guide, we may use the good things that pass in such a way as to hold fast even now to those that ever endure. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the third letter of John. From the elder to the beloved, Gaius, whom I love in the truth. Beloved, you do faithfully whatever you do for the friends even though they are strangers to you. They have testified to your love before the church. You will do well to send them on in a manner worthy of God, for as they begin their journey for the sake of Christ, accepting no support from non-believers. Therefore, we ought to support such people so that they may become co-workers with the truth. The word of the Lord. Happy are those who fear the Lord. Happy are those who fear the Lord. Happy are those who fear the Lord, who greatly delight in his commandments. Their descendants will be mighty in the land. The generation of the upright will be blessed. Happy are those who fear the Lord. Wealth and riches are in their houses, and their righteousness endures forever. They rise in the darkness as a light for the upright. They are gracious, merciful, and righteous. 
Happy are those who fear the Lord. It is well that those who dear generously and lend, who conduct their affairs with justice, for the righteous will never be moved. They will be remembered forever. Happy are those who fear the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. God has called us with the gospel to share in the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. My brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus told his disciples a parable about their need to pray always and not to lose heart. He said, in a certain city, there was a judge who neither feared God nor had respect for people. In that city, there was a widow who kept coming to him and saying, grant me justice against my opponent. For a while, the judge refused, but later he said to himself, though I have no fear of God and no respect for anyone, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will grant her justice so that she may not wear me out by continually coming. The Lord said, listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God grant justice to his chosen ones who cry to him night and day? Will he delay long in helping them? I tell you, he will quickly grant justice to them. And yet when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May the words of the gospel wipe away our sin. Amen. Friends, we continue to hear of Jesus who speaks of his coming these last two weeks of our liturgical year before we begin the season of Advent and enter into year B, where we read from St. Mark's gospel. And so it's important for us to identify, am I persistent in prayer? If someone were to describe me, would they describe me as a prayer warrior? It's a good question, eh? How much time do I spend in prayer, especially what we call intercessory prayer? Lord, help this person. Lord, help that person. As opposed to, Lord, help me. Help me, 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 me. It's fine to pray for oneself. It's important to pray for oneself. But if all I do is spend time praying for me, then I'm actually losing sight of what prayer really is. That a big part of prayer should be thanksgiving to God, number one. Also prayers of contrition, in which we ask God for forgiveness for the times where we have failed to love him as we should. Also in prayer for others, which we call intercessory prayer. Am I actually pleading to God on behalf of someone who doesn't share the same last name as me? Because even praying for our family, yeah, that's an expectation. That's really an extension of praying for ourselves. And so Jesus talks about this idea of the widow because of her persistence, she gets what she wants from the judge who has no heart. And so it's easy to identify that as we continue to flood heaven with our needs, How much more gracious is God to us? Now, that doesn't mean if I pray every day to win Lotto 649 that I'm going to win. Maybe I will. I don't even buy lottery tickets, so that's a start, right? But oftentimes what we pray for is not always what we get. Sometimes it is. Sometimes we ask God for something and he says yes. And we're very happy when that happens, right? Sometimes we ask God for something and he says yes, but not yet. And then we might get frustrated because Rico's time is not God's time. Your time is not God's time. But when he does answer our prayer the way that we want it, oh, then God's amazing again. (laughs) Sometimes God says no. And we often think that God might be punishing, not listening, does he exist, et cetera, et cetera. Is he too busy to hear my prayer? And yet when he says no and offers us something better, How often do we circle back in prayer and offer prayers of thanksgiving? Lord, I asked for A, you said no, but you gave me B, C, D, and E. 
which is far better than A that I asked for. So this idea of being persistent in prayer in times of need and in times of great joy, in times of sorrow, wherever we find ourselves, we must be persistent in prayer. And sometimes prayer is a formal dialogue with God. Sometimes it's doing a task. Let's say vacuuming. If you don't like to vacuum, say, Lord, I'm going to spend this time in vacuuming and offer it as a prayer to you. That's being persistent in prayer. Lord, it's almost year end. I hate getting the books together. I'm going to offer this task as a prayer to you. That's persistence in prayer. So no matter where we find ourselves, friends, let us utilize this 24-hour period that God has given us and put it to good use, as opposed to wasting the time doing frivolous activities, gossiping, cycling through social media just to pass the time because we're bored. This is not what God expects. May he find us persistent in prayer so then when he comes, he will look upon us as he looks upon this poor widow with a smile and grant us our petitions. Let us pray. Confident that our Heavenly Father will hear our prayers, we present our needs to him. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the church. May God's grace empower us all. As faithful co-workers in spreading his truth and love throughout the world, we pray. Let us pray for judges and, let us, and legislators. May God instill in them true justice toward and respect for the needs of those who are powerless, we pray. Let us pray for those who are discouraged, who have lost hope. May God bring them consolation through his saving word, we pray. Let us pray for our faith community of St. Joseph. May the Lord make us never weary in our prayer, we pray. Let us pray for an increase in vocations to the priesthood, religious life, and the diaconate, especially in our great diocese, we pray. Let us pray for an increase, I just said that. Let us pray for an end to the spread of the coronavirus for all those affected by the virus, that they may be healed by Jesus, the divine physician, for all frontline and medical workers, that God may keep them safe, for researchers to find a vaccine, and for all who have died as a result of the virus and their families left behind, that God may be their comfort and peace, we pray. Let us pray for all who have died. We remember especially Frank, the holy souls in purgatory, and those, all those in our book of life. May God's infinite mercy bring them safely to the end of their journey in his kingdom, we pray. And for all the intentions we hold within the silence of our hearts, Loving Father, we thank you for the gift of prayer itself and for hearing our petitions this day. We ask that you answer them according to your most holy will, through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread which we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. By the mingling of this water and wine, we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this wine which we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord. May our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me, O Lord, of my iniquity. Cleanse me of my many sins. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. 
Amen. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the offerings which we bring from the abundance of your gifts, that through the powerful working of your grace, these most sacred mysteries may sanctify our present way of life and lead us to eternal gladness through Christ our Lord. My brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For although you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift, since our praises add nothing to your greatness, but profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. My Lord and my God. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. My Jesus mercy. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Gerard, our Bishop, and all the clergy and religious. Remember your servant, Frank, and those in our Book of Life whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that they who were united with your Son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray though with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her husband, with your blessed apostles, with St. John, St. Catherine of Alexandria, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. My brothers and sisters, the peace of the Lord be always with you. 
turn and offer one another a sign of the Lord's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us your peace. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, who by the will of the Father and work of the Holy Spirit, through your death gave life to the world, free us by this your most holy body and blood from all our sins and from all that is evil. Keep us faithful to your commandments and never let us be parted from you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. May the blood of Christ bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. For those receiving Jesus in a spiritual communion, I invite you to pray. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there. And you never, for, never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. We have consumed, O Lord, this divine sacrament, the perpetual memorial of the passion of your Son. Grant, we pray, that this gift which he himself gave us with love beyond all telling may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. Let us turn to our Blessed Mother as we pray. We fly to thy protection, O Holy Mother of God. Despise not our petitions and our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers. O glorious and blessed Virgin, amen. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in the day of battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl through the world, seeking the ruin of souls, amen. My brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Let us go forth in the peace and love of Jesus Christ. Immediately following Mass, we have our holy hour. For those online, just log back in. Let us build a house where hands will reach beyond the wood and stone to heal and strengthen, serve and teach, and live the word they've known. Hear the outcast and the stranger, bear the image of God's face. Let us bring an end to fear and danger. All are welcome, all are welcome, all are welcome in this place. Let us build a house where all are named, their songs and visions heard, and loved and treasured, taught and claimed, as words within the word. Built of tears and cries and laughter, prayers of faith and songs of grace. Let this house proclaim from floor to rafter, all are welcome, all are welcome, all are welcome in this place.